no plans to extend Padu deadline. Malaysia aspires to become a global education hub. Good evening and Salam Malaysia Madani. You're watching Malaysia Tonight. I am Olivia Nicholas. Young Diputon Agong Sultan Ibrahim, King of Malaysia, described the unity of multiracial Malaysia as the most meaningful gift for him in conjunction with the Sultan of Johor's official birthday today. His Majesty posted on his first official Facebook account that the harmony and spirit displayed by the people, regardless of race and religion, was most vital for the country's stability. In conjunction with the official birthday, Sultan Ibrahim would also like to convey his thanks for all the gifts, including cakes, fruits and flowers received. Yet His Majesty said the most meaningful gift for the king is the unity among races, as it is the key to the country's prosperity. Sultan Ibrahim added that in Johor, he always stressed on the Bangsa Johor concept that has been the longest standing practice in uniting people of various races. Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim also extended his highest congratulations to His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim in conjunction with the Sultan of Johor's official birthday today. The Prime Minister in his Facebook post said that he and the people of Malaysia will continue to give unwavering obedience and loyalty to Sultan Ibrahim. Dato Sri Anwar also prayed that Sultan Ibrahim and the entire royal family would also be blessed with God's grace and be granted good health, prosperity and sovereignty. The government has no plans to extend the 31st of March deadline for the central database Hub Padu registration. Economy Minister Rafizi Ramli said that extending the deadline would delay the government's implementation of planned subsidy restructuring and targeted subsidies. Explaining further, Rafizi said the existing data will be used as a mechanism to give assistance to the people. He also noted that an alternative method will be used to prevent any person needing the aid from being left behind. So, sementara dia tak adalah tercicir, tercicir sampai oh, eh. tapi um, bila kita nak mula bagi tu duit tu dia akan panjang sikit proses dia lah. Kita kena we, we will prescribe the next step for those people yang telah dikenal pasti layak dapat tapi tak, tak belum mendaftar. Okay, macam mana dia nak semak kelayakan dia dan sebagainya lah. As of yesterday, a total of 7.07 .07 million people had registered and updated their information in the PADU system. In a related development, Rafizi revealed that his ministry will hold a meeting with the Sarawak government next week to discuss the registration for the central database hub Padu. The economy minister said this was following the directive by the state government to suspend the process of registering and updating the Padu system. Rafizi said he was informed that the directive to halt the registration applies only to state government offices and personnel. He further said the directive to suspend Padu registration was for the Sarawak government to obtain clarification from the Ministry of Economy. Kerajaan Sarawak antara paling terkedepan sebelum ini menggerakkan kaki tangan kerajaan negeri mereka untuk mendaftarkan rakyat menggunakan padu. Jadi sebab itu dari segi pendaftaran Sarawak adalah antara yang tertinggi. So uh, mungkin setelah melalui tiga bulan tu ada perkara-perkara yang kami belum dimaklumkan. Yang itu yang kita akan bincangkan uh, minggu depan lah. However, Rafizi said the meeting will not affect the registration by individuals in the state via the padu portal, which will commence as usual. Meanwhile, the economy minister dismissed rumours that the petrol subsidy would be withdrawn before Adil Fitri. He said the government wants to put all the assistance and the PADO system in place before any decision regarding subsidies are made. 
Rafizi said the government needs the first four to five months of this year to resolve the support system issues first. Because we need to put this in place first. Jadi uh, kalau contohnya um, tarikh tutup padu 31 Mac 2024, mustahillah akan ada sebarang keputusan mengenai uh, subsidi petrol dan diesel ni <laughs> terlalu dekat dengan 31 Mac lah. Karena kita perlukan data tu dibersihkan, kita kena maklumkan kepada orang ramai siapa yang dapat dan sebagainya kan. Rafizi also reiterated that the implementation of targeted subsidies was previously announced to commence from the second quarter onwards. The government has set a target of attracting 250,000 international students by 2030 with the aim of making the country a global education hub. Deputy Higher Education Minister Dato Mustafa Sagmud said he is optimistic that the ministry can achieve the target as currently there are around 131,000 foreign students studying in various education institutions in Malaysia. In the recently announced Kwakareli Simmons QS World University Rankings Asia 2023, Dato Mustafa said Malaysian higher learning institutions have experienced a successful year with noteworthy performance and results. Speaking at the ASEAN Malaysia China Higher Education Forum in Kuala Lumpur, Dato Mustafa also believed that with such commendable performance, the ministry would be able to attract both local and international students to study at local universities, thus elevating the standard of of national education to a new level. Staff of the Malaysian Meteorological Department Met Malaysia are the frontliners who always provide round-the-clock service to the public. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said they also play a key role in understanding the climate phenomena towards protecting life on Earth. In a post on Facebook in conjunction with the World Meteorological Day, he expressed appreciation to all meteorologists, especially Met Malaysians, for their contribution in channeling information and helping the community to understand the current weather conditions and be better prepared to face possible disasters. Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid, who is also the Minister of Rural and Regional Development, hoped that the World Meteorological Day celebration would educate the public to appreciate the importance of meteorologists to the world and of preserving the sustainability of the natural environment. World Meteorological Day is celebrated on the 23rd of March every year and this year's theme is at frontline of climate action. The theme was chosen to highlight the the meteorological services that play an important role in reducing the risk and impact of climate change. Still ahead in our business segment, Malaysia can surpass economic achievements of other nations. Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim's recent official visit to Germany has successfully strengthened the existing close and cordial relations between Malaysia and Germany and brought high investment potential to the country. University of Uttara Malaysia Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic and International Professor Dr. Mohamed Azizuddin Mohamed Sani said the Premier's roundtable business meetings with captains of industry and top companies from Germany and Europe would guarantee the continuous growth of foreign investments in Malaysia, thereby making the country a global trading hub in the Southeast Asian region. He said, for instance, Malaysia has secured new potential investments worth 45.4 billion ringgit from seven European unions for a period of five to ten years. While projects under Axfab, Malexis and Scott Glass approved last year with a total investment of 4.45 billion ringgit are expected to generate 1,000 job opportunities for Malaysians. Moreover, he said, Airbus is prepared to buy products and services in the aerospace sector worth 1.4 billion ringgit in the next five years. Regarding Dato Sri Anwar's agreement to join the Climate Club, Professor Dr. Mohamed Azizuddin said it aligns with Malaysia's agenda, especially concerning green technology. 
Malaysia has many advantages in terms of human resources, abundant natural resources, good strategic position and good geopolitical relationships with the majority of trading nations. If the country adheres to established policies, it can compete with or even surpass the achievements of other ASEAN countries. Putra Business School's Master of Business Administration Program Director and Associate Professor Dr. Ahmed Razman Abdul Alatif said the current challenging geopolitical period is not the correct time to focus on competition but on collaborations or partnerships that will bring about win-win situations. He noted that following ASEAN's principle or spirit, Malaysia definitely cannot view everyone as competitors as all parties have their advantages. In terms of collaboration, for instance, he said Malaysia and Singapore have established a close relationship and cooperation in terms of infrastructure development that enables trade relationships, business activities and labor movement between both countries. He also said that since last year, Malaysia has shown improvements in various rankings such as rising from the 32nd spot to the 27th on the International Institute for Management Development World Competitiveness ranking and maintaining its 36th position out of 132 countries in the Global Innovation Index. The ringgit is expected to trade in a narrow range of 4.73 to 4.74 against the U.S. dollar next week, with technical analysis suggesting the U.S. dollar or ringgit to be in the neutral zone. Bank Malamat Malaysia Burha Chief Economist Dr. Muhammad Abzanizam Abdul Rashid said the recent policy rate cut by the Swiss National Bank by 25 basis points to 1.50 percent has strengthened the greenback further as the U.S. Federal Reserve Fed FED is not about to cut the rate in the immediate term. Dr. Mohamed Afzanizam said, in a grand scheme of things, the U.S. dollar really stands out. The recent rate hike by the Bank of Japan also failed to lift the Japanese yen as the prospects for higher rates in Japan is still uncertain. On that note, Dr. Mohamed Afzanizam said the U.S. dollar is in the sweet spot. He explained that the prevailing Fed fund rate, which is currently at 5.50 percent, does give the greenback an edge in respect to the interest rate differential. On a Friday to Friday basis, the ringgit weakened against the greenback compared with a week earlier. The local note, however, traded higher against most major currencies. It improved vis a vis the Japanese yen, higher against the British pound, and rose against the euro. The ringgit also traded higher against ASEAN currencies. Bursa Malaysia is expected to remain in consolidation mode amid the absence of fresh catalyst. APEC Security Burhad Head of Research Kenneth Leong anticipates the FTSE Bursa Malaysia KLCI FBM KLCI to range in the 1,530 to 1,560 level next week. He said investors will be keeping tabs on key economic data such as Malaysia's inflation rate on the 25th of March and the producer price index on the 27th of March. Globally, he said the U.S. fourth quarter 2023 gross domestic product GDP data will be closely watched to provide further guidance on the coming month's interest rate direction. Meanwhile, Rakuten Trade Sindran Burhad Equity Research Vice President Thong Park Link said the benchmark index remained within a consolidative range of between 1,532 and 1,557 the past week. Despite this consolidation, he said the FBM KLCI was consistently above the 50-day exponential moving average line. Therefore, Rakuten Trade maintains the view that the benchmark index is still consolidating with a slight positive bias with expectations of it hovering around the 20-day exponential moving average. Thong anticipates the FBM KLCI to trend within the 1,527 to 1,560 range next week with immediate resistance at 1,570 and support at 1,520. 
the crude palm oil CPO futures contract on Bursa Malaysia derivatives is expected to trade sideways next week as traders remain in a cautious mode. Palm oil trader David Ng stated that market players will closely monitor the export pace of CPO to gain a better understanding of market sentiment. Therefore, he said the prices are expected to trade between 4,150 ringgit and 4,300 ringgit next week. On the other hand, Interbank Group of Companies senior trader Jim Tay said profit-taking activities might take place next week due to the recent uptrend in CPO prices. As for the stockpile, he said there is plenty of stock in both Malaysia and Indonesia, so the market is also expected to trade volatility with demand for the physical palm oil mainly coming from West Asia, China as well as India. For the week that just ended, CPO futures traded mostly, lower tracking the volatile performance of soya bean oil prices on the Chicago Board of Trade and Dalian Commodity Exchange, coupled with a lack of fresh catalyst. The total weekly volume advanced to 432,779 lots from 423,388 lots in the previous week, while open interest narrowed to 288,214 contracts from 291,546 contracts previously. China's online shoppers topped 915 million as of December last year, accounting for 83.8 percent of the country's total internet users. According to the latest statistical report on China's internet development, China's online shopping industry has continued to achieve sound development as it is further playing its role in stabilizing growth and boosting consumption. The report said green consumption as well as consumption on domestic products and China chick goods have become new growth areas for consumption. The report now in its 53rd version also noted that China's consumer market continued to recover last year with consumption of domestic trendy goods emerging as new drivers. Data showed that 58.3 percent of online shoppers have purchased China chick products online. Last year more than 150 million consumers who bought China chick products were born between between 1990 and 2010. Head of China Internet Network Information Center Liu Yulin said as young consumers are increasingly identifying with traditional Chinese culture and the supply of domestic brands has continued to increase, new consumption models are being fostered. At the same time, the spread of culture has sparked new trends, with China's online video users reaching 1.067 billion. Meanwhile, autumn grain purchases across China have topped 170 million tons, exceeding 80 percent of the target amount. The country's autumn grain purchases are accelerating with efforts to increase storage capacity and expand inventory being made nationwide. The state-owned China Grain Reserves Corporation has used 136 warehouses for storing the purchased grain and increased corn storage and purchase efforts in provincial level regions of Heilongjiang, Jilin, Liaoning and Inner Mongolia so as to help farmers sell their surplus grain and facilitate spring farming. The purchase prices for corn have stabilized and picked up with active market purchase and sales. In the northern eastern region, a key agricultural production base in China, the daily purchase volume for corn stands at around 900,000 tons. At present, the total amount of corn purchased in the northern east region has exceeded 80 million tons. Corn de-processing enterprises are operating at full capacity and the volume of autumn grain purchases will remain at a high level. The administration is currently guiding the northeastern region and relevant enterprises to expedite the purchase process and enhance the linkage between production and sales, thereby assisting farmers in orderly grain sales. Coming up in our foreign segment, Malaysia sending 100 containers of aid to Gaza.
Malaysia strongly condemns the terrorist attack at Crocus City Hall in Moscow yesterday, which resulted in the death of at least 115 people and injuries to more than 100 others. The foreign ministry also confirmed that all registered Malaysians, including students in Moscow, have been accounted for and are currently safe. The ministry in a statement released today advised all Malaysians in Moscow to stay updated on the latest developments and follow the latest updates and guidance provided by the local authorities. It also said Malaysia expresses its deepest condolences to the government and people of the Russian Federation, in particular the bereaved families of the victims and wishes a speedy recovery to those injured. The ministry added that Malaysia reaffirms its stance in rejecting terrorism and violent extremism in all forms and manifestations, underscoring the urgent need for a concerted international effort to eliminate the scourge of terrorism comprehensively and effectively. Malaysia will be sending a total of 100 containers with 1,350 tons of goods comprising various donations to Gaza through the fourth humanitarian aid mission launched today. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi officiated the flagging off of the Malaysian 100 container emergency humanitarian aid mission from Cairo to Gaza at the Royal Malaysian Air Force Base in Subang. Menteri telah committed untuk membantu MAPIM bagi penghantaran barang ini, barangan yang dibeli di Mesir khususnya daripada Cairo, daripada Kahirah dan uh, urusan untuk uh, kerajaan dengan kerajaan G2G uh, akan diuruskan uh, oleh Yang Mak Bermak Perdana Menteri sendiri pada petang ini beliau akan telefon Presiden Sisi untuk uh, mendapatkan uh, persetujuan Presiden Sisi daripada Mesir bagi membantu uh, bantuan ini akan agar sampai ke destinasi. Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid said the Malaysian government is also determined to defend the fate of the people of Gaza and Palestine in any situation and will organize help at various levels involving agencies and organizations such as MAPIN, Op Isan and others. Meanwhile, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres is expected to visit Egypt's border with Gaza on Saturday after Israel vowed to send its troops to fight Hamas in the nearby city of Rafah, even without United States support. During his visit, Guterres plans to reiterate his call for a humanitarian ceasefire, though renewed international pressure has so far failed to dissuade Israel from the planned ground offensive in Rafah, where most of Gaza's population has taken shelter. Despite warnings that such an operation would cause mass civilian casualties and worsen the humanitarian crisis gripping the territory, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he will press ahead with the attack. The latest bid for a Security Council resolution on an immediate ceasefire failed on Friday as China and Russia vetoed the American proposal, which Arab governments complained was too weak. Next up in sports, Harima Muda edge India in run-up to Doha. The national under-23 football squad edged their Indian counterparts 2-1 in a friendly match played behind closed doors at the Kuala Lumpur football stadium last night. Harima Muda, under the guidance of Spanish coach Juan Torres Garrido, opened the scoring through T. Sarvanan in the 33rd minute before Muhammad Alif Zikir Zaini Anua doubled their lead in the 48th minute. The Indian under-23 squad, however, narrowed the deficit through Chin Gangbang Shivaldo Singh in the 77th minute.
The national team are scheduled to meet the Indian under-23 team in another friendly on Monday before leaving for Doha, Qatar to compete in the Asian Football Confederation AFC under-23 Asian Cup from the 15th of April to the 3rd of May. The tournament is also a qualifier for the 2024 Paris Olympics with the top three teams earning automatic slots. In Doha, the national squad will continue with warm-up matches against China on the 3rd of April, Qatar on 6th or 7th of April and a yet undecided match on the 8th or 11th of April. Malaysia are drawn in Group D with Uzbekistan, Vietnam and Kuwait and only the top two teams in the group will advance to the quarterfinals. Youth and Sports Minister Hannah Yeo does not rule out the possibility that Malaysia will send a small contingent to the 2024 Paris Olympics after several big names and the hockey squad failed to qualify. Hannah believed that the athletes have done their best and they have to accept it if they did not qualify for the prestigious tournament. Kita kena buat penambahbaikan lah. Itu sebab Portugal sudah mengenal pasti LA 2028 dan kita telah letak atlet-atlet kita yang ada peluang ke 2028 itu dalam fast track program sekarang. Ya, so. Masih dalam proses kelayakan, kita berharap yang masih dalam proses itu akan berjaya. Lah. Ya. Bila hoki tak layak masa itu, kita dah tahu dah kontingen kita akan jadi kecil. So far, only five athletes have qualified for Paris. Bitran Rodik Lises for diving, Nor Shazrin Mohamed Latif for sailing, Jonathan Wong Guanji for shooting, Ariana Nor Dania Mohamed Zairi for archery, and Nor Aisha Mohamed Zubir for road cycling, with a total of 20 to 29 athletes expected to qualify. The 1960 Rome and 1988 Seoul Olympic Games recorded the lowest participation for Malaysia when only nine national athletes participated in each, while 62 athletes participated in the 1964 Tokyo Games. The decision by Malaysia to reject the offer by the Commonwealth Games Federation, CGF, to host the 2026 Commonwealth Games is wise. Sports analyst Mohamed Sadek Mustafa said this is because Malaysia is currently in a vulnerable position from various aspects, especially the economy, to the host the prestigious sports meet. Mohamed Sadiq said it will incur the government a huge expenditure to host the Commonwealth Games and the impact cannot be assessed in a short time. He said it would place the government in a difficult position to accept the offer by CGF in such a situation and with the less than satisfactory achievements by the country's athletes since last year, including at the 2023 Cambodia Sea Games and the 2022 Hangzhou Asian Games. He added the government will certainly want to focus on the country's development and restoring the country's financial system in addition to helping the people deal with the rising cost of living. Well, that concludes this evening's Malaysia Tonight. In our top story, no plans to extend Padu deadline. Do tune in to World Today tomorrow, coming up tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. on TV2. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. I'm Olivia Nicholas. Thanks for joining.